So, how are you? As we're waiting for our guest, today's another episode of Influencers on the Run. And today we're we'll talking about, well, today we'll be talking with Bander Hasawi, founder of Bander Ray's fashion model with 25,000 um, followers on Instagram. And he's going to be joining us right now, people. Let us send him a. Um, Welcome, welcome, Mr. Bender. How are you, sir? What up, what up? Good, how are you? I'm doing fantastic. Are you ready today? Ready, ready, ready as ever. Okay, all right. Uh, before we begin, I'll give you a nice introduction, okay? For people who don't right. know, this is Mr. Bander Hasawi, live from Saudi Arabia, fashion model, okay? The prince of runway. On oh, his way, on, on his way to be hopefully on the uh, Milan runway next. Okay, founder of uh, Beyond Ray Suits. Okay, and so before we begin, how are you doing today? How was your day, and what did you do today? I'm good, man. Thank you for this great introduction, man. This is uh, this is amazing. Well, it has been a blessing day. It has been an amazing day. You know, lots of productivity, lots of uh, meetings, lots of things uh, that we uh, are trying to get done for tomorrow. Uh, as you might know, uh, we have a casting going on tomorrow with our uh, Beyond Ray's brand. We're doing casting for this uh, short film that is in line uh, we're planning on doing. And uh, yeah, it's a productive day. I mean, I mean, what else can I ask for if, you know, we're having this conversation with you right now? It's, uh, it's a good day. It's a good day. Indeed. 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 All right. So you have about 25,000 followers on Instagram. Okay. You are a badge of authority. Okay. And... Let's go, let's go, let's first start on how you started. You started, I believe, as a fashion model. Is that correct? Uh, yes, but not, not particularly. I started, as a, I started my career as a fashion model, but it has always been uh, in my veins. You know, my father has always been an inspiration for suits. He is, uh, he's, he used to be a diplomat, and he always comes home, uh, come back home with suits, and he's focusing on the details, and he used to always teach me. Like, son, this is how you wear it. This is how you should appear to the public. And, you know, from that, from that uh, aspect. So I took, I took that uh, level of, of excellence and I tried to uh, maintain it. And then, you know, uh, I was fortunate enough to get invited uh, in college to attend one of the uh, fashion shows in Indiana University. I was part of it. I was representing Saudi Arabia as a model. And then... Uh, yeah, I took it from there. People loved it. People uh, got the feedback, you know. Uh, everyone was texting me the next day. Everybody uh, loved the vibe, the energy. It was outstanding. Okay, okay. Uh, so we want to, let's dive into, we have, we, have a, we have a lot of topics to talk about today, okay? Right. And so let us dive into, first, let's go dive on the social media aspect of everything first, and we'll move our way down from there, okay? Okay. okay. So you have... Based on the stats, we did, a, we did a bit of research on your stats, okay? So you have 25,000 plus followers, okay? You have an engagement about, they say your engagement is around 6.10%. That means on average you get about 1,500 likes per, pic, per content. On average, 36 comments and about per post, maybe about six, six, 16K views, okay? So right. let's talk about that in terms of you and social media, okay? So let's talk about, you know, what do you feel about that stat and those numbers and how far you've came? Uh, I mean, I think, I think it's decent to, uh, to, to an extent where I've came, uh, yet compares to uh, how I was uh, socially on social media back then. Uh, to be honest with you, uh, I, I really don't take these stats uh, in consideration when it comes to... Uh, Valuing and evaluating the quality of work that is being delivered, you know, it's just a number that reflects to you who's really online at that particular time. As you know, there's a strategic time to to uh, be engaged online when it comes to posting or going live and things of that sort. So I think this is these stats are only a reflection of that particular moment when I was interacting. Got you. Okay, so let's talk about. Uh, 
social platforms you use or the social platforms that you feel or you know you're more familiar with and you enjoy using the most right i'm i'm pretty involved in lots of uh, social platforms you know i'm i'm active on on snapchat i'm active uh, the most on instagram uh, i also got facebook and twitter <clears throat> but uh i i uh, i i present and represent my work uh, on 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 instagram as it is the main uh, platform that i use and uh, it allows you to to uh, really evaluate uh, and, and see the quality of the work that's being delivered. Also, Snapchat is, is, is a valuable platform for me. Uh, I use it for my daily, daily updates, you know, what's going on with me on a daily basis. I can't do that on, on, on uh, Instagram. That's just my personal preference. Uh, I think it's just less uh, exposed for me. Uh, and by the way, I'm a really private person. I think this is, this is, uh, this is something that not everyone knows. I don't like to post about each and every detail about my day. I like to share some of my, you know, exciting moments and news in regards to my day, but not every, uh, I'm, not a, I'm not a blogger, if that makes sense, you know. Got I'm, you, you're yeah. selective, you're selective. Yes, very selective. You know, very, very particular in how you, you know, say, <laughs> exactly. dash. Okay. Exactly. And I think and the, more, the, the more you out there, the more, uh, the more you expose yourself and make yourself vulnerable for people to, you know, criticize, not, not that people don't criticize, people criticize in regardless, but I think the more you out there, the more opportunity you get for people to, you know, yeah. just say things. Got you. In terms, okay, uh, which platform do you feel has helped your mission the most and what you're trying to do? Uh, I would say uh, they both work uh, in coordination with each other. I think okay. uh, part of my followers knows me more in Snapchat who, you know, and that relationship between me and them bring them back to Snapchat and vice versa. Uh, so, yeah, I think, I think, I think it's uh, the core of it is Snapchat. And then from Snapchat, people come to see the actual, like, final projection of my uh, uh, projects and works and pictures mm, and things like mm, that. Mm. And let's talk about. You said you also use Twitter and Facebook. So let's talk right. about the. Let's talk about the. Tw what do you? What do you use Twitter for? What's Twitter for? In your diaspora of everything. Oh, um, so Twitter for me is just uh, for. Per Yeah, so I'll be in a, in a yeah, really I got deep you. conversation. Yeah, I can hear you. I'll be in a really deep conversation and I hear something like a quote or something, you know, someone quotes something and that really clicks with me. I would keep all of that in my Twitter as a journal. So I'm, I'm basically using Twitter as a journal platform for me to keep all of the, the things that are sparking with my head. You know, some, sometimes, you know, in a conversation with somebody, some things spark with you. You just want to keep it in a, in a place which you give access to people uh, to see and, you know, refer to what's going on with you. Got you. And also, okay, now let's move on to the content aspect, okay? So let's talk about how you create content, okay? And you're uh, on, particularly on Instagram. How do you create content? Who do you use? Is it more of using the phone, camera? What is your system of creating content on Instagram? Um, I'd say most of my contents actually are not, are not, are not made or fixed on, on, on the phone. It's all... On a, on a high professional tech level, you know, I dealt with lots of uh, production companies who are uh, uh, handling my work and lots of them uh, had some contracts with me in the past. So all of the things that are being displayed are uh, finalized with high quality uh, production. Uh, however, uh, sometimes I do use uh, things to use filters on my phone, like an application or some, some, some uh, sort of things like that. Uh, I would say Vasco is one of my favorite apps, uh, okay. which allows me to use filters and things on, on, on pictures. It's really nice. Got you, got you, got you. That's, that, that, that's what we like to hear. We like to hear the different yeah. sides of it. Okay. Right. Our, uh, and what about for, for, what about for Snapchat? Is there a particular, do you, are you using the phone or do you do the same thing? Take that data or those photo that media from the professional tool and Upload it on Snapchat, or how do you use it? What's your technique? Uh, no, Snapchat for me is really authentic. It's purely me with no filter. Just you get raw footage of me and, and content, of course, when I do video, uh, videos. So um, 
I've heard lots of apps for, for, uh, for Snapchat that people use, but for me personally, I prefer to just use it as it is because that's, uh, people, people follow you for your authenticity. And I think uh, that's just the value uh, Got of you. Snapchat. Got you. Um, so, like, in dealing with the professional companies that do your content, is there a, is there a system or a, pro, a way you guys go about it say, hey, you know, we do it like this, like this? Is there a system or a dialogue or a plan? Uh, for each company, for each production company, has, uh, each company has its own theme and its own way of dealing with content. Uh, let's say, you know, this company likes to be, uh, you know, likes to edit picture in a certain way. Uh, I cannot go and change the company's policy in that term. Uh, but most of them are my friends, you know, so I try to keep the theme uh, in the same way. I don't like to go out of my way and, and, and be uh, like let's say for maybe a streetwear or some sort of, uh, some type of sorts got you so let's talk about the recent a recent company you've worked with in that progress i mean in that process excuse me uh you mean company like projection company or a company yeah. like a like a brand like any you know, anyone that you've done some work with that you put on on social media recently yeah uh well she's a friend uh her name is safa shout out to her uh, she's a really nice friend. Uh, she was really, uh, she worked with me uh, personally and as, uh, with the brand as well. Uh, we are, uh, our, our mindsets are so in line that she understands and see the vision uh, so quickly that we don't have to uh, further explain or understand. She just gets the vibe. Uh, and that, gotcha. that's really helpful in any business, you know. Uh, uh, it's really helpful. So we did that and uh, we executed the project. It was outstanding. People loves it. Uh, got lots of good feedback. Uh, she also worked on this recent project, a uh, recent product that we did, which is uh, the mask. Uh, we did masks on, on DeAndre, and uh, she was the, the person who took the footage, and she covered the, the campaign for that, uh, and it turned out really well. So. Got you, got you. Okay, our next segment is called Social Media Reports and Studies, okay? Right. So I'm going to read you a few things, and you tell me based on your opinion how you feel about it, okay? Okay, okay. So... Uh, what's your take on these recent studies? This study says, undress or fail. Instagram's algorithm strong arms users into showing skin, okay? This comes, this is the sources from algorithmwatch.org. So basically what they're saying, I'm paraphrasing, is that they say that if you show less skin, okay, like, you know, you, you go topless, the, the algorithm will promote your content more. What's your thought on that? I agree with it. I agree with it. However, however, uh, I feel like it's highly, it's highly depending on the audience and what the audience w uh, like to see. You know, if you, you know, uh, you got different audience and, you know, some people likes to uh, uh, expose more skin uh, just to get attention and some people likes to uh, be covered up. So it, de it really depends on the influencer himself and, what kinds of audience, you know, sometimes you get uh, 100K or 200Ks and, and millions in follow of followers, they're not all the same, you know, uh, and, and for each person, uh, there's a specific category of people that follows that person. So uh, for me personally, uh, there's no, uh, I just go with the vibe, you know, I, I, I don't really believe in, uh, you know, showing more skin, like too much skin, I think, I think that's, uh, that's really trying too much, you know, and uh, that's just how I feel about it. That doesn't mean it's right or wrong. It's just my personal opinion to it. Uh, as, my, as you know, my style is, 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 uh, is, is uh, fully dressed with suits. And so from that concept, I, I, uh, I told you what I, what I think about the, the experience. Got you. Got you. So another one is, uh, what are your thoughts on the social media censoring in this day and age? Because we've had a lot of different reports of Instagram putting people in jail, Facebook putting people in jail. What are your thoughts on social media censorship? You mean censorship as in uh, monitoring? Like when people monitor your moves? No, censoring as in, let's say, you get blocked for a day, you know, censoring in general. Yeah, I think, I think it's really important. It's really fair. Uh, and and we, need, we need that kind of protection. You know, as, as you know, if you're an artist, you put your work out there and the next day someone else comes and takes it and, and you know, refer that work to himself or herself. That's just not fair. And, and, and uh, dealing with Instagram as it is uh, an international platform, uh, you cannot really track that or, or handle that 
in one particular country. So uh, I think censoring is really fair. Uh, you know, uh, blocking someone for a day or two is just it's just a way of showing like you know we're here and we see what you're doing. So please keep it give it. Uh, gotcha. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Got you. So, so you've blocked the two people yourself. Then that's what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? You put, uh, a, and, uh, you put a, <laughs> You've been like uh, block, uh, block, <laughs> uh. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Uh, there's this other one is the fake it till you make it theory. We see right. we see a lot of people on social media faking the lifestyle. And what are your thoughts on that approach? I think it's really it's really clever. It's really intelligent, you know, as, as, as fake as my people think it's, it's fake. I think it's uh, the way I see it, I see it a bit differently. I, see, I don't see it as someone's being fake. I see it as a law of attraction. You know, you attract what you want. You attract uh, richness. You attract health. You attract uh, wisdom. Whatever it is that you want, you attract it. And this attraction, you know, some people categorize it differently, so they might mistake it with being fake. But it's really not. Mm. This person is a big dreamer. And they're dreaming big, and they want to be that person. So, so mm. they position, so they position themselves mentally and physically to be that person. And for the public, when it appears to them, they might think it's fake, but it's not. This person is really living his or her reality to becoming that person. It's the law of attraction. Mm, mm. That's an interesting take. That's a very interesting take on it. You know what I'm saying? Okay, yeah. what do you think of the Instagram algorithm? What's your opinion on the Insta on the Instagram algorithm? By algorithm, you mean, like, what, what do you mean exactly? Well, everybody has said sometimes, you know, you might post something, you know, it, it'll get this m amount of, you know, likes or, or, or traction. You may, you know, post something else that, let's say, for example, you post your newest suit, okay? It right. gets 1,000 likes. Uh, let's say, like, you go in there, you just, like, do a video with you not really doing anything, and it gets 10,000 likes. What's your opinion right. on the Instagram algorithm and the way that stuff is being promoted? Um, there, there are some strategic ways to, to post on Instagram, you know, when it comes to the time and the content itself. You know, the time, time, time aspect is really strategic. You must know uh, what are the times when people are the most active uh, when you do uh, announce your newest project or whatever it is that you're trying to announce. Uh, that's one thing. Another thing, the content itself, you know, let's say you are going with the flow of posting consistently the same content or a content that is related to it. One day you come up and you post about soccer or you post about uh, uh, spaceships. That's a, that's a completely different content. So that content might either get more uh, uh, attraction or maybe less. So changing the content itself is, 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 a, is a major factor in changing uh, the algorithm. Got you, got you. Uh, people, this is before we go to our next segment. If you are hearing this live right now, do put your questions inside the question box. So at the end, we can get to you. And if you are hearing this on a podcast or the video is pre recorded, please put your comments in the comments section on whatever platform this, you may find this. All right. right. Our next segment is making money from social media. Okay. Right. Let's talk to the narrow. Uh, nice. Uh, alhamdulillah. Okay. So, so, so uh, making money from social media, that's a, that's a really interesting uh, cons uh, uh, question. So, in that term, you mean, you mean paid partnership or you mean... We mean, we mean that whole area. Let's talk about that whole area. And from your side of view, okay, have you made money from social media? Uh, of course I have. Uh, of course I have. Okay. <laughs> I always make. But it's, 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 not, uh, it's not something that I can tell you I can, I can live off. You know, it's not something uh, reliable to maintain a certain lifestyle. It's just something, uh, and and that just that just for me personally, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not making lots of money from it. I know people that are making lots of it. I know people that are fully relying on on living of of social media platforms. Uh, but that's uh, that's just another way of of making money. You know, uh, I think consistency is is a major aspect of. Of, of making uh, making that happen of, of getting paid uh, as consistency and the content itself uh, as well as uh, your personal uh, is, is your personality and how do you uh, display or announce or market for a certain product or or, 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 or an idea or a restaurant you know it's just how you choose to uh, present that to the world got you okay uh, now let's go into your business okay beyond raise okay 
This is a, now let's go from the beginning of Beyond Rays and tell us about it from the beginning to where you are now. Yeah, uh, for 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 Beyond Rays, it has been it has been an amazing journey. Uh, although it hasn't been uh, so long uh, since we have launched uh, our company, we have started in, in December of 2019. So that's uh, a bit more than a uh, half a year, maybe. Yes, a bit more than half a year. Uh, and it has been a success. Uh, just the idea itself of Beyondre uh, uh, is, is so unique by itself. Uh, it has grabbed lots of attention. It has grabbed lots of uh, uh, highlight on, on the, 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 the movement itself as we, as we are uh, basically selling a lifestyle. Um, since the beginning of Beyondre, we have uh, participated in so many things. Uh, we have participated in, in, uh, in uh, press conferences. Uh, we were in NBC, uh, uh, channels. We were on SBC, Saudi broadcast, broadcast uh, channel. We were also featured in uh, uh, Destination Magazine. We were also a part of uh, lots of movements that are going on. And uh, currently, we're working with the radio. Uh, cor- currently, also, we're working with another uh, magazine. So things are going really well with the brand. Uh, we're selling suits, of course, as you know. And... Uh, uh, with this pandemic, uh, I think it was also uh, a necessary step for us to step into making masks, uh, which also was success. Uh, we have created uh, this one product. Uh, we called it the mask. It's just a fabric uh, mask, uh, which is uh, washable and reusable. We have uh, uh, installed our initiation uh, on it. I can show you that just our mask and uh, it has made a tremendous uh, success, although it has been two weeks since we did sell, uh, but that's just an indicator of where the market for us is going to which that. Got you. So let's, let's go into the mask, okay? Because you, Beyond Ray is a suit company and you guys added a new product from the pandemic, okay? So what right. inspired you to make a mask? Uh, it just, it's just the way, the way things were going in Saudi, you know, the, so we, we respond to the market, we respond to the situation, you know, we have no, I've, I've noticed uh, the issues of, of, of people dealing with masks, you know, uh, how it is like the, the, the tribe is too tight or the way it looks is not as fashionable, you want to you wanna suit up and you want to go to a meeting, you know, you want to be different, you want to look different, you don't want to spend money on uh, buying masks every now and then, you just want to have uh, three or four masks that are washable. Uh, so from that concept, I started to to think about executing the idea, and we we already have the fabric in stock. We already have the people in stock. I already have uh, our tailors uh, in stock. So uh, the circumstances are, are with us, and we are ready. So might as well just use some of our fabrics and, and create masks. And uh, we did, and people are now requesting more. People are, are now requesting uh, uh, gloves. So and and we're working on it. Got you, got you. And what's the future for you? What is the future for Beyond Rays, your brand? Global. It's to go global. That's the future. You know, our, uh, our global uh, uh, inspirations are everywhere. You know, we are just trying to be as big as other brands. Uh, so that's, the, that's, the, that's how we started. This is our foundation, is to start uh, with a strong foundation to, to be able to uh, compete in, in, in the suit market, both nationally and internationally. Got you, got you. Um, you know, when I met you in 2019, okay, your biggest thing was about creating a community, okay, via social media and outside of social media. Let's talk about that. Uh, yes, well, uh, it's still my biggest, uh, my biggest uh, priority is to build a community uh, as, as I build the brand as well. You know, the brand itself forms uh, a community from a way or another uh, by associating uh, uh, clients or someone with a suit. All suited up and the same, so there's the same, there's a mutual vibe that is being shared between us. Um, and uh, as you know, our uh, traditional uh, outfit is, is thobe here in Saudi Arabia, which are, uh, we're so proud of. Uh, however, we're just trying to add a bit of blend to uh, the way uh, we, we dress uh, formally other than the, the top. So uh, we decided to go with the suits as it is international and we can expand globally with it. So uh, we did and, and, and we put our t- twist to it when it comes to the designs and, 
so I think I think that that gives some sort of belonging to whoever is is buying suits or even just feeling the vibe of us uh, uh, being being here in in in, in, uh, in this part of the world. Got you, got you. If anybody who's watching the live has any questions. Please put your questions in the Instagram box. We can answer them before we leave out of here. And if you're hearing this pre-recorded, definitely put your stuff in the comment section on whichever platform. All right. I do have, let's see here. A yes. I did see that Mr. Beyond Ray's has Beyond Ray Fitness. You know what I'm saying? So what's up uh, with Beyond? Yeah. You know, I was doing, when I was doing my research, I did come across mm -hmm. that. So tell us about that <laughs> a little bit before we get out of here. Yeah, that was that was one of my biggest projects. You know, I was uh, so this is this is one of the things that not everyone knows. I used to be a personal trainer. I do have a few clients now. Uh, uh, I used to be a personal trainer. I used to be uh, uh, extremely into fitness. I am now, uh, but I'm getting a bit a bit too busy with my works in the company and my main job uh, to to uh, get back into fitness, but. That was one of one of my biggest projects back then. I think it wasn't back in uh, 2015, 16. Uh, it was amazing, and uh, I wish I can uh, get back to that uh, uh, business again. But you know, uh, now in Saudi, especially here in the city of Riyadh, uh, the fitness competition is 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 tremendous, and it's mm. just not not my uh, pure passion. My pure passion is about fashion, and. Uh, uh, yeah, fitness is just, I might get back to it on a personal level, you know, but not, not to, uh, got you, or anything, yeah. got you. Okay. We have a few more questions before we get out of here. Okay. Uh, what do you feel is the future of social media? The future of social media could be very scary, to be honest with you. We see, we see, we see some sparks now. We see some, I see my, uh, my niece and my uh, nephew, uh, and I, I noticed how they handle social media. You know, we used to have books in school. We used to have uh, uh, journals in school. These things are not existing anymore. And, and, and you know, just this, uh, the virtual life now with this pandemic and technology is expanding in, in a really nice and scary way at the same time. So I think, I think the future of, of, of Instagram and social media and technology in general uh, would advance to to things uh, that are uh, that is me and you from from the 90s generation would be uh, would always would almost seem like a like, like they are unreal like they are unreal to us. Let's say you know from from the 60s or the 50s or the 40s even uh, there was no airplanes. The concept of going of moving from point A to point B uh, within a few hours was 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 like a time machine. It was unbelievable. Uh, they couldn't think of the concept of airplane you know uh, 50 no or more people 50 more people in the air going from 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 saudi to the u.s thousands of miles they they can finish that in 14 hours so that was that was that was uh, almost unreal and to us no now doubt. it's it's very normal you know uh so i think so you can only imagine what would it be the next big thing uh 10 15 years from now you know got you Got you. No doubt. No doubt. You're absolutely right. All right. Who would you recommend that we should interview next after you? Are there anybody that you think that we should definitely interview that deserves to have an interview? Uh, there's so many people, man. There's so many interesting people. Uh, okay. I, I, will, I will let us know. You know them, you know. Shout them out here. Shout them out here. You know what I'm saying? Let us um, know. Shout out to my friend. I can see my friend uh, Salim here. Uh, he's a really nice guy. Uh, such a such an incredible guy. Uh, he has his own business, business as well. We were in, in school together. A uh, very nice guy. I highly recommend him. As well as uh, I can see some uh, Beyond Dream members here. I can see Prince and I can see Mr. Knife. I can see uh, my cousin. There's so many people that I, I would recommend. If you ask me, I would recommend to have them all in one, uh, <laughs> all in one interview and we can gotcha. check them all. Uh, but let's say... Um, we can we can start with uh, Mr. Knife next. He's such an elegant man, and he works uh, uh, in, in one of the biggest uh, sales uh, companies. And he's into suits as well. And this guy has uh, a tremendous vision for uh, his own company and for the uh, on on a personal scale. He has lots of going on. So I think he could be uh, a good guest. 
Got you. And for the people who are listening around the world, where can they find you? How can they support you? And all that good stuff. Uh, well, I'm here. I'm here in Riyadh. Our office is, is here in the, in the downtown of Riyadh. Uh, you can find our contact information on our uh, social media platforms, my personal account. You can ask me anytime. You can approach our uh, friends and team members at the brand account as well. Uh, our studio is, is now being constructed. Uh, we will finish our studio very soon, which will have also a store to it. You can come in and, and, and uh, display or, and see the, project, the products, the fabrics, and all the upcoming uh, product that we're working on. Uh, yes, feel free to, to uh, approach us, and we will be more than happy to get back to you. Got you. So people who are listening right now, you'll be able to find this, all this information in the comment dis, uh, in the descriptions, okay? On whatever, whatever platform, the links to all my social medias and websites will all be in there. And Mr. Bander Hassawi, thank you very much for coming on with us. We appreciate you, and we will support you. Thank you for coming on Influencers on the Run. And we hope to you know, talk to you again soon. We'll talk about more of your accolades, the Prince of the Runway. We shall be seeing you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me and uh, appreciate the time. And we're looking forward to uh, meet you in person and uh, redo the whole uh, 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 Snapchat, Instagram again. Definitely, definitely. Thank you very much, brother. Have a wonderful day. You as well. You as well. Bye-bye.